of God. The presence of God is another voice in the hearts and minds of Christians. Amen. Amen. Yes. I want you to understand that, friends. The message of Jesus, the message that Jesus brought, gave options. You don't have to. You don't have to. And, well, you don't have to. The divine presence of Jesus and his messages brought to his servants like me and you provide the choice for all believers. The divine presence of Jesus. Where? Where is, where is that presence? In you, in me. And the messages of his servants like this one. Provide for you the choice. So you don't have to listen to me. But I represent a choice. I represent a choice. And at the end of the service, by the end of the service, you will make a choice. You have made that choice. And, and you live by your choice. Let's read Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. Read it, please. You will show me the path of life. Hold on. You'll show me the path of life. In your presence, in, come read it with me. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That is the choice. You do what you want to do, enjoy yourself without Christ. I mean, as a Christian, any Christian, you, 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 the believer has all this choice, do what he wants to do. But then the believer is also told he can choose otherwise. And if he chooses otherwise, in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, a pleasure forevermore. Do you realize what we are saying? There are pleasures all around. There is pleasure of the world and there is pleasure for the child of God. Amen. Two roads before you. Pick your choice. Yes. We're talking about this year. We're talking about your wellness program. We're talking about what matters. We're talking about what should matter for you. When you evaluate yourself last year. When you evaluate and then this year you're projecting your mind. Your on expectation. Last year is experience, but this year is expectation. So I'm just reminding you, nothing new. I'm just reminding you of what you knew already or what you didn't know. And so faith, the faith which Christianity provides, shines light in a dark world. Offering sight to the blind and wisdom to those who are seekers. It has pleasure. It's pointing you to a choice. St. John chapter 9 and verse 12 state that as Jesus and the multitude were passing a street, two men blind from birth held out Jesus, have mercy on me. He had compassion on them and healed them. They bawled out, have mercy. Then he heard that call and he had mercy on them and healed them. They received the serving faith of Jesus and who opened their eyes, showing them that one does not have to see to believe. Their eyes were blind, but they saw Jesus. They saw Jesus. 
the saving, serving faith of Jesus opened their eyes even before they called. Jesus saw what they were going to do. He opened their eyes. So it doesn't matter the situation in which you are. You can reach out to Jesus. You can reach out and experience the change. The serving faith of Jesus is available. Available. And so just as your mind, just tap your mind to get the serving faith to experience what God has to offer, just tap into the mysteries of God and you'll begin to experience the serving faith. Just tap your, tap into the mysteries of God and appreciate his compassion for you and the grace of God will open your eyes to understand. Man can't understand what we, the things of God. I mean, don't fully understand the things of God. That's why I said serving faith is a gradual, is a gradual, causes a gradual change. Gradual. As you go along, you, you are, you, you are missed. You are mystified to understand that God could do this. Even sometimes things that happen in your life and you're amazed that it happened. You're amazed of the change that you had. Some of you have testimonies. Walking, <laughs> testimonies like the old, the lady was, who used to talk about. Say, he said, she said, uh, I was walking down destruction highway. But now all the way along it is Jesus. I was heading for destruction. But all the way along it is Jesus. You can appreciate that. Can any one of you appreciate that? Can any one of you say that? Only five of you. Because the rest of you, if you don't experience it, you can't talk about it. But if you experience Jesus... And you realize your own limitation. You realize you would be a drunkard. You were a thief. You were a liar. You were all kind of things. But now Jesus has come in. The experience of the serving faith makes a difference. Stop boasting at this view on the education. It's not you and all your education. It's after. You receive the compassion of God. You talk about all the way now. It is Jesus. And so my friends, tap into God's grace and mercy. You don't have to, remember I said, you don't have to see to believe. So you don't have to understand it fully to believe. The man said, Lord Jesus have mercy on me. Whoops. Their eyes were open. Then they begin to see. As a matter of fact, friends, you don't begin to see until you see Jesus. You don't begin to understand until you project your minds on Jesus. Then he will do the work in and through your life. So God is compassionate. Your life will begin to begin or continue to display more kindness. Serving faith means kindness. It means thoughtfulness. As I go along, examine yourself. Are you displaying these characteristics of the Christian life. Because if you display these characteristics, you're displaying serving faith. Honesty about yourself. You know, that's a sin that many of us have. You're not honest about yourself. You're not honest about yourself. I, I, I don't blame you to be quiet. And search for how honest you have been 
regarding yourself. Uh, well, let me use a nice illustration. A nice illustration for the children. You present your report to your parents. I got A's. Did you really get A? Or you change the C to A? They see an A student, but God sees a C. That's what I'm talking about. Honesty to yourself. And that dishonesty to yourself can hurt your future. Honesty to ourselves. Which reduces, you know, honesty to yourself reduces pressure. If I know anything, I know that when you do something wrong, there is pressure. Because man was made to do things right. When you do something wrong, there is pressure. Pressure on you. You don't understand that to ease your pressure, check on yourself. Sometimes doctor can't do anything. Doctor gives you some tablets, yes. To cool you down a little bit. And when he cools you down on the left hand side and the right hand side is boiling up. Because your pressure is still based on your dishonesty. Until, until your dishonesty is resolved, your pressure will evolve. Check yourself. You think I'm talking the truth? If you don't think I'm talking the truth, continue to experience. Experience the truth. But you can still deny it. It's, that is also dishonesty on yourself. Awareness. We are talking about serving faith. Serving faith brings an awareness to your obligation and responsibilities. That's where many of us, our sins lie. Awareness of your responsibility and awareness of your obligation. Whether it's at home, at work, or at play. Christians need to display this difference in serving faith. Truth in your social interaction. You know how many girls are told, uh, gold girls and boys are being told, I love you, darling, dear sweetie pie, aki and codfish. <laughs> and if she look good in the man's eyes, she will see lie, lie, lie. <laughs> Christians should not be in that kind of of situation. And if you're a child of God, serving faith will open your eyes to these problems. The last one I want to mention, understand and share the feelings of others. You know, many of us don't understand and share the feelings of other people. We don't. And realize that people, and uh, yesterday or the day before, and my wife and I were joking and she didn't understand what I was thinking. Seriously, of what she said. Changes, physical changes can have psychological effect on us, any one of us. Men, you need to understand that, that your wife is a little more miserable last week. <laughs> and you are a little more short. You're short. She tells me this, but I'm not. Psychological. The psychological effect on the mind. If you're ill, you begin to have psychological effect. If you don't, if doctor gives you a word that you didn't want to hear, it gives you psychological effect. So when you come home, you're, you're, you're going to see the man, but don't, you don't hear him. And when he talks, you don't realize it's him you're talking to. And you say, oh. 
And he has to have psychology and behavioral psychology too. To remind himself, you're just coming from doctor. And you should know she's coming from doctor. She's not going to be the same when she come home. She's not going to be. So husband and wife must have that understanding that there are changes that can take place. And therefore, you need to share the feelings of your wife, the feeling of your husband, the feeling of your children, the feeling of everything, everyone. Let us acknowledge and praise God for his example of compassion. Yes. Jesus had compassion. And ask him to give us more compassion. My last point. Can I go to the last point? All of you said yes. Anyone says no. The next, my friends, we have saving faith and the next one is sending faith. Sending faith. Sending faith. Sending faith leads to the establishment of tell me. Establishment of intentional living. Sending faith means at the end of the line, your intentions should be made clear. When I start speaking, it wasn't clear. But as I go along, you begin to understand my intention. And you, have to, you, need, you need to know that. That's why you need to hear the entire, entire statement before you reply. And that is very important between wife and husband in particular. He, she begins to talk. Don't answer before she finish. You begin to talk, don't answer before he is finished. You need to do that because sometimes you don't understand his intention until you hear all of the statement. Is that true? Then why you don't say amen? It's, it's not happening to you. You need to hear the entire statement before you make a response. And I'm not joking about that because you experience it every day if you live with somebody. And if you don't live with somebody, you talk with somebody, you interact. And I'm saying, need to be realized that a, person's, that a person is saying does not necessarily mean he's expressing his intention. Sometimes he's just going, getting around it. But Jesus Christ established internal, intentional living. Read verse 26, 226. Let's see that. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You know where I'm going. Faith and works. Many people talk about faith. But you don't have any works. So you're gonna, we're going to hear that if you have faith, there must be works. There must be works. So even your works, you are indicating why you do that. Intentional living. Once a person becomes converted, 
and begins to experience a change of attitude. His desire, his desire will be for others to come to know the truth as well. Once you become converted and you begin to experience the change, your desire should be and will be for others to experience what you're experiencing. Is that, is that right? So therefore, the nature of our deeds, listen carefully, the nature of our deeds will be the evidence of change. The change being experienced from faith. The nature of your works indicate the evidence of your faith. That, that, is that clear? Let me repeat. The nature of what you do is evidence of what you have. If you have Jesus Christ, your life is going to be different. There must be works. Your works indicate your faith. Is that clear now? His actions are new, the person who has changed. His actions are now directed by the Holy Spirit who dwells in him. Once a person becomes saved, his actions are now directed by the presence of Jesus in him. There's a scripture verse, Galatians 2 verse 20, my favorite. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but the Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith or the dwelling of the Son of God in me. In other words, nobody can live the Christian life without Jesus Christ in him. That's what it means. I don't care who you are. No one can live the Christian life unless Jesus Christ lives it through him. Because man is born in sin and shaped in iniquity. It takes the power of God to change the person and live through the person. Amen. Let's, let's go ahead and go ahead and clap. Jesus commissioned and empowered his disciples to go and share this good news at home and abroad. This is the purpose of the church. The sending faith. Jesus sends the faith because he wants this message to be understood by everybody. It doesn't matter your age, your stage. He needs it to understand. We have different ministries and so on, some for youth and so on. But look, friends, the only reason we do that, a part of the only reason, is that we want you to understand that if you have it, show it. If you have it, display it. Because you must have show have works. You must show works if you have that faith. Just, just, do you realize? Do you realize that, especially nowadays, if you say you love somebody, you have to show works? Especially nowadays. Man. It's, it's, they're not Jew up now, you know. No matter how the girl said, sweet oat, that no, that no work. I have to show works. 
If you love me, give me something. If you love and don't give. It's a serious matter. You see, first time, love was tangible, love was strong. Love stood on its own. But nowadays, love must have evidence. And you, it's, it's a surprising thing. <laughs> ah, boy. <laughs> you imagine a person, imagine a couple that leaves this morning and going to work. And they really love each other. But Christmas come. My birthday come. Christmas, birthday, and everything come. And pass. I you not see anything. You're coming home as a man. You know, it's a different woman you're coming home to, you know. Ricky learn. <laughs> it's a different woman you're coming home to. Come on, come on, say, oh, how are you? All right. <laughs> how was your day? Boy, you asked me that for. <laughs> Gentlemen, learn. Go thou and do likewise. That is, bring something in your pocket to show love. Love must be displayed. That's why God urged the disciples to go and display love. Sending faith. That's all Jesus was doing. You know. He's sending them. Sending faith. Jesus commission. Let's read Acts 1 and verse 8. Because this is a biblical thing. Acts 1 and verse 8. You shall receive power when the Spirit has come upon you. Hold on. You shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. You know, there are some church members who think that Christianity is satisfied. Because you have power. Oh, it's nice, it's great, it's pleasurable, it's all that. And you shall be my witnesses. You should, you receive it, you have to witness to it. So many of us are sitting down, just warming the chairs. My friends, you should be expressing the faith. Because Jesus says, you shall receive power and then you shall be witness unto me. We have, it's, it's a two-part thing, you know. Love is a two-part thing. It's a two-part thing. You receive the message already. That, that's Jesus, that Jesus' is part. You witness. That's your part. It is your part to witness to what you have received. I'm coming down. Coming down, friends. So don't sleep too. You can open your eyes now. I have little, little leave. I soon finish. <laughs> My friends, the God who the fulfillment of this mission, fulfillment of the mission the disciples were sent on, has lit the fire that kept burning through the world until it reached me and you. The fire that Jesus Christ lit has reached, gone all over the world until it has reached you and me. And my friends, then God 
raised up CBC. God raised up CBC as a witness to witness. This church is a witness to witness. And I hope you understand your position here. You are a witness. You, you are a witness. And what must you do? Witness about your witness. I see somebody sleeping. Uh, open your eye, man. Not, not, not long. I know you're sleeping. My friends, God raised up CBC and I want you to hear if you're sleeping, open your eyes and hear. If you're a part of CBC, God raised up CBC as a witness to be a witness internally and physically that the fire of his grace will keep on burning. If you don't witness, if CBC does not witness, the fire of the Holy Spirit is going to stop. God did that. And God will keep on burning until every living soul hears the truth, bows his knees and confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we will continue. We will serve God. We are empowered to witness to God. That is the sending faith. And I'm going to stop now. Then and only then, will all the people understand and appreciate the differences in one another. This world needs that God that they may understand one another and strive for a better life. And so my friends, we should live our lives not just to gratify our own sinful nature, but to express the real wellness by exemplary living. If you want wellness, you're planning wellness, make sure it includes the sending faith that Jesus Christ had to offer. And so, display love, joy, peace. Display patience toward one another. Display self-control. Those are the ways by which the sending faith will be effective. God bless you.